So there are medications for these primary problems. And so some of the medications that can be used for arthritis and weakness, we've got NSAIDs, which means non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. It's kind of like the bunny version of Advil. And so uh, there's uh, Medicam or Meloxicam is one of those, um, and uh, Rimadil. Some people might have used Carprofen. Joint supplements like chondroitin, glucosamine. MSM is short for methyl sulfonylmethane, which is actually very good for the spine. Um, Adequin, which is a glycos glucosaminoglycans. It's an injection, and that does tend to help. Somebody had recently told me about Miristol. Um, they said, and it's uh, another joint supplement that they actually are specifically, you know, labeled for rabbits and we're just going to order it and give it a try but they said they've had some really good success with that uh, sometimes in addition you know sometimes the medicam isn't enough and they need a little bit more and so then we will use different types of analgesics an analgesic is pain reliever um, the NSAIDs like medicam they relieve pain but they also relieve swelling so, but sometimes it's good to add on a second medication if the Medicam isn't enough. Um, yes, you can still increase the dose and increase the dose and you can use as high a dose as you need to on the Medicam, but sometimes it's nicer to kind of save the kidneys and you not go up on the Medicam as much and add on a second medication for pain. And uh, things like butorphanol or torbutrol, torbugesic is the other name for that. The also, it's also related to buprenex. Some people are using buprenex. Um, tramadol is distantly related. I'm not a humongous fan of tramadol. I think it does work some, but I think it's not as strong, and it definitely is not as fast in onset as the other. So it's nice as like a secondary medicine when you just need a little bit of help, but I'm, I'm not a humongous fan of it, but I will use it sometimes. Um, plus, they don't like the taste of it very much. Gabapentin is a something that helps to decrease like nerve pain. And so some of these bunnies that have the hind end um, paralysis and, and weakness, sometimes they almost are like more sensitive and hyper aesthetic is what it's called. They just, they, they're like more twitchy and they feel things. And sometimes they may get some phantom pain or some twitching that makes them chew on their back feet. And then this is definitely where gabapentin comes in with there's more of a neurologic cause for discomfort. Uh, sometimes we're also using muscle relaxant like Robaxin. The other name for that is methocarbamol. Sometimes if they're really stiff on their back, you know, then that can help. Or even with a head tilt potentially, if they're really super stiff, that may help. So kind of a combination of things. And we try one thing, try another, and see what helps for them. Um, the picture that I've got at the bottom, this is Cosequin ASU. So basically, their, Cosequin is the um, brand name for a chondroitin and glucosamine that they make for dogs and cats. And But I wanted something with MSM in it, too, so that was easy to give for rabbits. And the only one that they have for dogs and cats is flavored liver and stuff like that that's got the MSM in it. But this is for horses, and it's got chondroitin, glucosamine, and MSM. And I kind of did the math and was like, uh, I guess about a teaspoon or so. So is that what I said, or half teaspoon? So, um, so And it comes in a humongous tub like this. But that's also something that sometimes we're recommending, especially if you have a lot of rabbits or you're going to be using it a lot or a big bunny, is, you know, just kind of get this big jug and that way you're getting them the chondroitin and glucosamine as well as um, MSM into them. And there's some effects, but I definitely feel, I personally think I've seen more effects with adequin than I have with the chondroitin glucosamine, but sometimes we still see good effects with those as well. Um, Dr. Lamb had talked about, um, you know, kind of buyer beware, and the ideal thing is to get brand names, and we really have a lot of trust in the Cosequin brand, because, you know, they've done the tests, they know that there's the medication in there, because these are nutraceuticals, they're not regulated by the FDA, so you could get something, you know, that's like Frank's brand, and who knows what's really in it, and if it's effective, so yeah, there's a zillion of them, and even for yourself, when you're getting vitamins, you know, what's what they say is in there is not necessarily in there so just buyer beware and if it helps you it, you feel better you know there's probably something in there <laughs> okay oh and then head tilt um, again I'm not going to go into this much but usually we're going to treat that with anti-inflammatories antibiotics anti-parasitics anti-dizziness and a lot of times it just takes some time it can take two weeks it can take two months we had one money it took eight months 
and he suddenly stood up and was fine. So, um, okay, so tr how to treat the secondary problems. If they're losing weight, make sure food is always within reach. You might have to feed them separately um, and feed more nutrient-dense foods like pellets and oats in critical care because then each bite is going to have more calories in it rather than hay, which is it's much more healthy for them, but it's, you have to eat a lot more hay to get the same nutrients. And usually we're talking about older bunnies. Um, and so if you have a young bunny, you have a whole life where you want to have good teeth and a good working gut. If you've got a 10-year-old, 12-year-old bunny, its teeth are what they are. And at that point, if they're still looking great, their teeth are not going to be a problem if they're living on critical care for the rest of their life. And so, you know, and sometimes if you're thinking, well, they might only have like another year, you basically you say, yo, feed them whatever they want. So, um, yeah, so definitely I don't get to worked up about, um, you know, how much hay they're eating as they're older because, a lot, you know, and I've had some people who are so anal, I was told that I had to feed my bunny a quarter cup of pellets and no more and limited greens and lots of hay and then their bunny was getting older and started to lose weight just needing more nutrients. So even a healthy bunny, as they get around age 9, age 10, they need a little bit more nutrient-rich diet and so feeding them more pellets is good. That would be the first choice and then maybe feeding more greens or more oats after that. And then also if you're just trying to entice them to eat. And sometimes if you really want to get a rabbit to eat hay and they just you just really want to get them to eat it, sometimes we'll do alfalfa hay because I'd rather them eat alfalfa hay than no hay. So, but in general, for healthy rabbits, grass hay like timothy, orchard, oat, etc. So, and then muscle atrophy, physical therapy, and exercises to try to de slow down some of that atrophy. Um, it is pretty difficult to do. So, if they have urine scald, um, usually your veterinarian is going to prescribe some antibiotics to help the skin infection. Um, a lot of time, usually we're going to shave off any of the fur because if you have urine scald and red skin, you need to get the fur off of there. If your vet doesn't shave and there's urine scald, then they, you know, they really need to shave. That is the ideal. You have to get all the fur off give it a good thorough cleaning. We recommend chlorhexidine shampoo. It is a disinfectant antibacterial and it's very, very safe and gentle for rabbits. And it's just, it's antibacterial. So it's like, it's just very cleansing. And I have seen some amazing improvement. You know, I've had bunnies come in bright red butts and we shave and we do a shampoo with chlorhex and it just takes it down like five shades, if not more. And it just looks so much better immediately afterwards. And then you want to use some topical treatment. You can use Neosporin, you know, just any triple antibiotic ointment. Um, you can use Sylvadine. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Sylvadine because it just kind of gunks up and stays there and you have to almost like physically wash it off. Whereas with the Neosporin, it kind of rubs off and then you just reapply more. Um, the other thing is, um, oh, vitamin, the A and D ointment. It's vitamin A, vitamin D. It's for babies. And that also would work. And the it's not antibacterial, but what you're also doing is not only are you putting a topical antibacterial, but you're also then trying to prevent more urine from getting on there. So you're kind of creating a barrier using either the Neosporin or the A&D or the Sylvadine is you're creating a barrier so any new urine will just come right off and not go onto the skin. And I think the key thing also, and these things are safe for them if they lick them off, okay? Some people will use desitin or zinc oxide, and I get very nervous about them if they, you know, lick those off. Sometimes people will use um, a, an ointment that has steroid in it from another vet and you know and I also I don't like them if they're going to lick that off what's that steroid going to do to their gut um, and so how to prevent it you want to keep them on sheepskin or wool and Dr. Lamb had talked about getting like wool pads which is great because a lot of times this stuff goes through um, sheepskin fake sheepskin is when we say sheepskin we mean fake sheepskin not obviously real sheepskin and so if you if you have a chance, you can look at the, the blanket that those guys are on. But basically what happens is, is that the bunny is on the top, and then the urine will go down beneath it. And that's the key thing. A lot of times you're putting a towel underneath this that's going to catch soak up the urine. And that way it kind of wicks the urine away from them more. 
And uh, so sometimes, with you, many times, you're going to have to change this frequently. It depends on how bad they're peeing and how messy they are. Sometimes it's once a day. Sometimes it's more frequent. Uh, the other thing is you're going to check their rear end daily. And if at the time of urine scald, you may have to bathe them every day. Then after that's healed and you're doing maintenance treatment, it might be that you only bathe them once a day or twice a week. And it kind of depends. And sometimes you can do just a rinse with water once a week and then maybe another time of the week you're doing a thorough bath. It just depends on how much urine and how much feces they're getting on them. The key thing is is to, to keep it, um, to manage it so that it doesn't become urine scald again. So, so you've got to, you know, you're curing the scald they have and then you're doing preventive care going forward. Um, some people go for powder as a protection and so I'm I don't like the powder myself I think it just kind of gets gunked up but there are other people who will do the powder I know that people say oh well it always stays so wet and moist and I haven't really had a problem with that so much I think you know I bathe them with the shampoo pat them dry if their fur gets really wet and if they're they're frail you want to you know maybe blow dry them you know warm them up um, and then I'll put a little ointment just on the areas that need it but usually they're gonna dry up pretty well so but there's some people who really want to put the powder on it's okay they're it's not gonna hurt them it, it's that also becomes just personal preference I think it's usually like a cornstarch um, powder and um, so and a lot of times expressing the bladder you may have a rabbit that yeah he can pee but then he lays in it so if you express the bladder, it's not that he needs it so much as you're doing it to keep his, him, his butt clean because that way you can express it into the sink instead of waiting for him to pee all over himself. And a lot of times that helps you keep them cleaner. If they have a decubital ulcer, we talked about, you know, sur um, so once they have the ulcer, um, you basically, uh, we have to do surgery to cut away the unhealthy skin and suture everything back up again. And um, I didn't have any pictures of the surgery, but I did find a picture. This is this bunny that had the, the leg that was underneath it, and we tried this process. It didn't quite work, but this is a donut that we made out of like bandage material and then you suture it in place it's kind of like if you seen like those butt cushions that people will use it's the same effect you're elevating the um, the injured area so it's not touching and you're you know, by using this padded area so in this case it didn't really work but we tried it to see and you know I think we did it for a few days so it may have relieved pressure for a few days but then we switched to something else I mean it's been done in humans it's been done in dogs so but we tried it in this rabbit so I had a picture of it I was like oh yeah you know just so so a donut um, but uh, so I think we had tried it for a few days and then we switched to something else so on this case and prevention obviously soft clean bedding um, checking the skin on the downside frequently like every day if you see any discoloration take to your vet right away and helping the rabbit change position frequently if at all possible um, and holding them in a different position a lot of times will help as well sometimes you know sometimes like with guinea pigs they'll get sore feet and so I'll tell people you know or even sometimes with rabbits if they get sores on their front feet um, from other issues I tell people just hold your bunny you know hold them hold, hold the animal off their feet or upside down so that you know that area gets some rest and do that for a few times a day kind of gives the skin a break so other treatment for secondary problems, like if they're um, not able to use the litter box. So um, if they um, can't use the litter box, then you can cut out the side of the litter box. And I have some examples to show you. So now this litter box is, uh, this one you can still, I believe, purchase um, at most pet stores. has a little bit of a lower lip, but it's still got a, a pretty big step for it. You guys can see that. And then I just took a litter box and I think I probably use like big scissors and kind of cut it through and sometimes you can use like a drill bit or you know kind of do like that kind of a thing and sometimes it splits a little bit like there's a little split here but it still works okay um, I have another one that I actually kind of cut out to here too. And so you still might have bunnies that stand here with their butt hanging out, but at least, you know, they kind of, they, they might be more likely to try getting into the litter box. 
So I have had, you know, sometimes a larger litter box because if they're if they're having trouble with controlling and to get into a litter litter little litter box, sometimes having a bigger one to climb into is better. I got like you know like one of those under bed um, plastic bins like you, that you would put your sweaters in. So then it's got a lower lip, but it's nice and long so that they feel more comfortable when they're getting into it. Um, you could certainly kind of build up also from outside of it so that they can kind of even kind of ramp into it, that kind of a thing. Um, you can try changing the material in a litter in your litter box. Sometimes maybe they don't want to go in and step on the hay on the litter and maybe they'll prefer a, a you know, a blanket. I had one bunny who just started acting like, oh my god, this hurts. Like he would jump in and be like, how? And so I actually just put like a thick towel in his litter box and just have to change it several times a day. So, or you could change and maybe just have hay in one corner and then have something soft um, like Carefresh. So, so those are some things you can try. Uh, certainly, if your pee bunny is peeing outside the litter box, there could also be a urinary tract infection that is not related to arthritis or any of these issues, uh, or could have, you know, just again be stiffer and, and may need to um, start medical treatment for that. And then also, um, treatment for neurogenic bladder would be to express the bladder a few times a day. Sometimes medication may help some. There's one medicine, bethanicol, helps the bladder to contract, and phenoxybenzamine helps to relax the urethral sphincter. And a little marshy over there is on the phenoxybenzamine, it's not like an amazing, like, oh yeah, it works great, but it helps. I can definitely tell the difference since I started it that it's easier to overcome her, her urethral sphincter and get her to pee. And so she is for adoption if anybody can express her bladder, but she's, she's a tough one to express. So uh, she's probably staying with me. <laughs> So, and then this is, um, and there's different positions you can use for expressing the bladder, and we'll go into that. This is actually a picture of Caroline I had taken out. She had a phlegmy on her lap, and so sometimes you can just, like, put it on their bladder that way and get them to, ex to express, you know, hold them, like, when you're doing their bath. Um, under the sink and then you can press on the bladder and then there's some other techniques we're going to go over in a minute.